All right, we are recording. All right, so thank you all um, for taking some time to uh, to join this art talk today. Um, I first want to just uh, kind of give everybody an overview um, for those of you who are watching this at home. Um, these are the artists, uh, some of the artists that are in the show um, in this time. It's our first show, uh, first exhibition at the All People Arts Gallery. And um, back in the day when we were planning um, our show, we decided we really want our first show to be really impactful. And um, we really wanted like some amazing artists in the show. Um, so all of the artists have some connection to the South Side. They are all American artist and um, the work uh, is is kind of relevant to uh, today and what's happening. So let's let's go ahead and get started with that. I also want to note we are missing a few artists. We might we might have a couple more that join us, but uh, Molly Mustakeen, uh, Francesca Miller, and also Brian Moss um, are not with us right now, but maybe chiming in later. So, um, all right. So let's get this party started. Let me ask this question to all of you. So. Um, I'll start with you, Gay. Tell me a little bit about your work, what themes you address in your work, and um, how what, what you brought to this show. She's on mute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, so, I'm not in a cage, I promise you. This is just something... <laughs> It's a weird kind of setup I've got here. Um, so please ask that again, um, April. I apologize. No, no worries. And hey, Fran. Hey. Hey. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so I'm just going around. I'm asking everybody, just tell us a little bit about your work. And also just tell us about, um, tell us about the work in the show um, in this time. OK, great. So I consider myself an art activist. And now that I'm on the other side of 50, pushing 60, I'm a grandparent, really um, the art that I do, I don't do it just to be visually pleasing. Um, all of the art that I, that I do has to really have some kind of social justice. Well, 90%, I'd say, of the work that I do would have some kind of theme with social justice. And I think in this time, um, there's just, a myriad of uh, issues that we have in the world um, that we can touch on. And uh, one piece in particular that I have in this show, it's called A Nation Torn. And it is just about the state of the United States now. Um, there's, you know, when you look at our government, especially, I don't see any kind of bipartisan efforts at all. Every, it's a very partisan, uh, everything's black and white. And basically who winds up losing in the end are, are us, you know, it's us. We are the ones that lose in the end. We feel, I feel at least at this point, kind of powerless um, in affecting our government officials. Um, the only way I think really I, I can express myself is through painting, maybe having people view it and have them have some kind of reaction and do something about it. And also voting, 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 voting. All right. Amen. Yeah. I did it today. <laughs> All right. Way to go. Done. Blue wave. Yes. All right. So let me go down in, um, I, I love, um, I love what you say, Gay. Um, Don, can you tell us a little bit about the work in the show? Um, also, how it kind of corresponds to the theme, and what kind of themes do you normally work with? Um, well, my, my themes are, are a, a wide range of things. Um, I'll go from social justice, uh, or I'll, I'll do something even a abstract. So I, I do a lot of different things of art. Uh, but this particular show, I did want to address social justice um, with, with the piece I had, um, with this peaceful resistance that I did. But I also wanted to um, get another vibe in there as well. I, I also did a piece called uh, 345 Tea Time. And I think it's important because um, in 2020, I think we're so consumed with so much and there's a lot of negative. We need to take time to also just kind of just, you know, relax and, and take a deep breath. So I also wanted to show that side 
as well. Um, 2020 to me is going to be one of those years that is just going to be really special when we look back on it. Um, I'm probably the only person that's really, um, I don't want to say optimistic about 2020, but it's, it's like a, a, a while back I said, we need to have an administration to come into the White House that is so blatant that it's going to wake up the whole entire country. So I, I'm, I'm not as negative as a lot of stuff that's going on because I see this as a turning point, basically. Right, so. right definitely. A lot of silver linings um, for about this moment. So um, Lisa, let me ask you. So you had uh, three pieces um, in the show and um, tell us a little bit about um, the, the subjects that you deal with. And then also just tell us a little bit about um, just the usual themes that you work with in your work. Uh, well, for the invite to the show, the In This Time, um, I focused on marginalized people, which in general, that is what I do, but it's mostly um, women of color. I'm working on more images of more types of people. I started doing this work in 2015 and I looked at a range of tones, black and brown people. Um, and then I really, really focused on black, black women because I'm a black woman and I want to see more of us represented. So I just decided that's where I was going to go. For this show though, I decided to focus on black trans people. Um, and actually, you know what? One of them is not trans at all, but she is a very powerful figure who fought for trans people um, on the front lines speaking um, Tony Tony's name um, I I have been lost in sort of what Don was saying about the um, negativity of the moment but I can't help but translate my art use the art as a vehicle to translate and make something to shift per, to shift perspectives so someone might look at my work and think, oh, it's really pretty, it's really beautiful, but then they start, they get drawn in to the expression and then they start thinking about who this person is, what they've done, why they um, get showcased. And I hope the learning comes from there, like Gay said. Um, so in this time, it was a really um, serious subject matter to me, uh, but I wanted to bring light to some people that aren't talked about a lot, but, but hunted even more than mm -hmm. just black people in general. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to move to Fran. Same question for you, um, Fran. So tell us a little bit about your work, what themes you work in, and tell us a little bit about the work in this exhibit. Yes. Um, okay, so as far as themes, I'm still in my, um, I just explore everything. <laughs> I love to paint people. Um, so that's like what most of my, if not all of my work consists of. Um, and I love to just, yeah, just paint people, capture our beauty um, as we exist in the world. Um, but specifically, the work that I submitted um, in this exhibit, excuse me, just swallowed some juice, <laughs> <laughs> was, um, uh, so I have one piece, which is called uh, Save Me slash Reach. It has like two different names. But anyway, it is um, a colorful man and he's like this dancing figure and he's reaching up um, into, this, into the air and there's just darkness surrounding him. And I felt like it spoke to in this time because uh, as some of you just said, like 2020 has been quite the year. Um, and some would argue that we've been surrounded by darkness. Um, and so you have this figure, this person who is just representative of humanity um, and he's full of light. And you can see, like, based off his posture, I mean, I, I'll leave it up to the viewer as far as to interpret, like, you know, what feeling or mood they feel when they look at him as far as his body language. Um, but in painting that, I was, my mindset was just like, uh, here this person is surrounded by darkness, yet still full of light, not allowing that darkness to invade them, you know. So it's just a really hopeful piece. Um, and I felt, again, like it just related to this year. Um, and then, of course, my other painting, which was Chadwick Boseman, um, you know, he lost, he lost his life this year, unfortunately. Um, yeah, it was just a lot of heavy hits to the, the Black community this year in general. Yeah. A lot of loss. I gotta say, Fran was fast with that. I mean, I think um, at that time, I want to say um, Chadwick Boseman had passed 
maybe a day or two and friends like I got this piece and she showed me a picture and I was like bring it <laughs> so yeah that was really special that was a really beautiful uh, way to commemorate them so I'm going to throw this out here and it's something that everybody has kind of echoed um, in the work you know and just talking about their work and how it relates to this show um, what do you think the role of the artist is in this time and this is for anybody to answer any order I I think his, work, everybody. <laughs> his, historically, the artist has always been, I think, in front of the line when it mm -hmm. comes to social justice issues and issues of, you know, just equality. You can look back through history, and if you look at art, you can kind of know what's going on um, whenever. Um, there are paintings of revolutions. Um, and at this time, I think we're kind of in a revolutionary stage um, where, you know, Don C says, out of this horrific time we're going through, I think something powerful and good, I think good change is gonna come of it. So we're always on the front lines, I think artists, I don't know if it's our sensitivity, but we always kind of, we always kind of know something's not right and instead of, like, I, I wish I could just, when I'm interviewed, I wish I could just paint the answers. <laughs> Instead of, I'm not an orator, you know. So. We are recorders, though. Um, like Nina Simone said, we reflect the times. Uh, we, uh, musicians and poets, same thing. You know, we're structuring a, a way to, an entry point to understand the world in a different way. Um, I enjoy it. I think, you know, the power of art is, is the core of what social justice can mean for the mass of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I want to piggyback on what Lisa and, and what, what Gay said. Um, I'm looking 20 years down the line when people look back and they want to know what happened. And I think that our voice this time, we get to tell the story as opposed to someone else telling the story. Mm -hmm. So as, as artists, uh, we are in the forefront and we are the leaders. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I would agree with all of that. Um, I feel like that's a really loaded question, April, and there's like a million <laughs> one answers to it, honestly. Um, but I feel like as artists, like we have, again, so many roles. Like I feel like we are kind of like facilitators of conversation, you know, in society. Um, I feel like we can kind of just you know, you have those people in the room who just like, let me just throw out this question or let me throw out this statement and let's have a discussion. Like, I feel like that's the role of an artist. A lot of choose to be uh, just very straightforward in whatever we create. And then in that sense, just using our, our art to challenge or to educate. Um, yeah, I feel like you can be like someone, you're like, I'm just documenting. I'm the person sitting over in the corner just writing down what everybody else is saying, you know, um, not really putting my view in it, but just recording things as they are. Um, so like I said, it's just, it's so loaded. I feel like every artist would probably answer the same, but also kind of different. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good, I love that analogy of being that person in the room um, who like throws out that question, like, well, let's, you know, let's do this hypothetical. And I totally 100% agree with that, that, you know, art gets us to ask questions and have conversations and to think about things in a different way. So that's awesome. Um, the other question I had, cause I know most of, um, most of you, if not all of you have um, created public art this summer. Right, it's a huge summer for this. Um, Fran, I know you definitely have been hitting it hard. Gay, Lisa, um, Don, I mean, all of you have been like super busy this summer. Um, anybody, just tell me like, what, what was your like initial um, feeling to like go out right in the middle of, um, of the protest, right? And just like, I, I don't know about you, but I know for me, it was just, I had all the emotions, you know, I was like angry, I was numb, I was sad, I was so many, and you know, even in the midst of that, even hopeful, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and all of that. So just, just tell me, what was your, what was your thought? Like, what were you thinking of when you were out um, making work? And then what did you really want to say um, when you were making work out there? So being a child born in the 60s and looking at the pictures from back then, 
you know, the civil rights movement and juxtaposing it against the current uh, pictures, it's, it's amazing how different it is. Um, you would see in the civil rights movement in, in the 60s, a sea of black people and then you see maybe a, a, a white priest here, a, a Jewish woman here, you know, just a little spattering, but to see the protest this past summer, it was just, everyone was just indignant about the situation, everyone. It, it was all hues, all genders, it, it was just everyone, all ages. And for me being down there, it just, I got hope. I got hope for the future. It's like I always say about my granddaughter, she rarely ever goes to a house or visits a house where there was solely white people on it or black people or, you know, all, all of anything. There, most of the households that she visits are a, a mix of things. And so, in her mind's eye, she's four, she, she doesn't see, you know, all black and all white. So it, I guess being a part of that, it was really, it gave me great hope for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I needed to get some hope, um, which is why I went ahead and went out there. I definitely was not out there as much as Francesca was. <laughs> um, <laughs> I admire you and Hakeem for all the stuff that you've done. Um, I feel like I've been more about trying to push the conversation. I love that Gay mentioned the 60s. Um, I, I had a hashtag I was using for a little while, black words in white spaces, because um, I was going, I was being invited into places to, as a black artist, to um, put my thoughts out there. And I didn't want to put like, uh, you know, blood or like some like really violent thing. I really was hoping to create an opening of possibility so people can change their perspectives because we really do need that. I also am really encouraged to see so many different people in the streets because I do believe that black people should not be protesting in the streets. We should be about protecting each other. Um, and that is the core of our work and all other white people um, should be protesting in the streets. Um, not that we shouldn't be out there at all, but I just think that we can be putting our energy in different, if, in different areas at this point in the, in the game. Um, the 60s, we, we had to save our lives. We were in the streets. We were, you know, being hunted back then too. And I'm just, I'm having a hard time separating what was then to what's now. And that's the whole span of my whole life. I'm, I'm 51. And I was born in the time when like that stuff was not quite dying down. It was still up in the air, but you know, to see it whipping up again and to see us being hunted, I think. And I keep saying hunted because that is what it feels like, mm -hmm. you know, like pulled over. You just like, you see someone in their black or brown skin and you just attack them. Like you just like people have license to do that now. And it is very upsetting. Mm -hmm. um, and outside of, sitting and watching it all happen, I have to make something, I have to make art. I have to interact with people and try to stimulate conversation for my sanity. So it's not even like, I am the person that can make change because I don't think that that is just me. I just feel like I'm just doing what I can with my energy and I have a lot of energy right now. So I'm using it. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Um, I felt like, uh, here's another analogy. I guess I kind of felt like a medic something like I felt like I had been being trained up for this yep. moment so when I got the phone call I was like hey can you and Shelby and Duarte come and paint this mural like in two days I said yep we sure can <laughs> and you know ever since then just kind of been hitting the ground rolling but the reason I say I felt like a medic was because um I at least I kind of feel like you just kind of said this but I also share the sentiment of I feel like we have enough I shouldn't say that I feel like there is a place for art that uh, highlights our pain and oppression as black people and is like, you know, kind of like that black lives matter, like, you know, that kind of thing. Like there's a place for that. Um, but I also feel like there's a place like for 
uh, to show us as like beautiful, dignified humans, you know, stuff like that. So when I was out there creating, I felt like I was doing it for us, like for black people, for those who, uh, those of us who were marching on the streets and whose hearts were just, you know, in pain and angry and frustrated. Like I wanted people to look over and see a painting of, you know, black and brown person smiling and full of joy. Like this is what's not even on the other side of this, but this is what's in the midst of this. Mm -hmm. Like this is what we are, you know, like we don't have to, I mean, feel what we're feeling, but like here's some feeling along with it, it you know. Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely our, our method of protesting. I mean, to, to know that we were standing there putting our bodies out there and painting our hearts, you know, I just feel like we did it more for the protesters to say like, you know, well, business owners and um, building managers inviting us to do spaces. Um, I was choosing places where I felt like the person inviting me feels like I feel. Mm -hmm. So I felt, I felt kind of critical about where I was going to be putting my energy. And I feel like you all did too. Um, and that was really important, you know, because it's we're not just black people to slap some paint on something just to feel good and then walk away. Mm -hmm. There's really there's work happening. Yeah, it's really intentional work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. I definitely had some like ambivalent feelings about it too. I just remember um, I was on State Street working, and some of the people who would work downtown um, or you know residents downtown would stop and say, "Thank you for what you do." <laughs> uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Right, like what do you think? Like you. Francesca said, this is for you know, this is for my people, and this is for yeah. the people who are out here protesting. You yeah. know, this is to yeah, this is to give life. This is about um, yeah, this is my form of protest. And the number of people downtown like tapping me on the shoulder and interrupting me while I'm on a ladder to tell me about Antifa, I just I can't. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I do have another story of uh, what happened to me a couple weeks ago. I had a very spirited debate with the, uh, a young gentleman who uh, he had a particular um, presidential candidate's uh, name on a hat, a camouflaged hat. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was yeah, it was it was interesting. I mean, we we had a nice talk for about thirty minutes. <laughs> well, for, for, so, for, for me though, I, I would have to say that. This year, I, 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 it was my duty to, to be out there. Um, personally, I've been a victim of, of police brutality. I, I, I grew up un, uh, under hate and I grew up under, under racism. And I did a show back in Pittsburgh, I remember in, in 2017, and I was asked the question, was it culturally appropriate for a, a white artist to take up a black cause? And I said, we're going to need that to happen. So at, when 2020, and I, I go out and I see what's happening, not just in Columbus, I see it in Minnesota. Then I start seeing things happening in other countries. I, I seen protests in Israel, in Africa, and even oh, in, in so Ireland. Exciting. So um, to me, I'm thinking maybe this is a turning point because yeah. one of the things, Lisa had said something earlier about some things starting to come back. And my thing is, it's like we've never addressed racism in this country. It's right. never been addressed. And I think now is the time to really put it in the forefront. And it, it's, it's not just police brutality. It's also, it's, it's in corporate America. It's in all sectors. Yeah, so, the covert corporate level is the most deadly too. Um, I, uh, I wanted to say on that, Don, that um, I, I look to James Baldwin, who had a lot of the answers, like that he is co-current right now. He could be talking in person right now to us mm -hmm. and dropping all the knowledge. Audre Lorde, Angela Davis, there's so many great yeah. people that had amazing things to say and perspectives back then. And I know they're the old guard, but some people needed to be reminded to, mm -hmm. to get back in there and get reactivated. Um, and support the youth because it's not just the youth that we're protesting. I mean, we all have something to stay. We're all being affected by this. We should all be stepping in and making change in some way. Yeah. And and they came out. The youth really did come out. They did. Oh, God. Yep. And I'm, I was there for it. It was really, really great to see. And it was great to see worldwide. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that's kind of like what you were saying, Gay. I think that's what gave me a little glimmer of hope. I mean, we'll, we'll see. But um, that was what gave me a glimmer of hope was that um, for a moment, you know, the world was in solidarity with us. Yeah. Uh, 
that was that and was everybody had time because no one had no one had any work yeah, that's <laughs> right yeah, yeah now everybody's open for business you know yeah. Yeah. it's different um that's so true so um let me ask you guys i again i told you i promised you a short and sweet talk so um i have a couple of targeted questions for each of you uh, Lisa, I'm going to start with you. You have a uh, solo show at Secret Studio. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, well, uh, just like I'm celebrating people, well, not just like, I am celebrating people. So for the Secret Studio show, being that it is a recording studio, I decided to showcase uh, or celebrate local performers. Um, there's a comedian, there is um, a dancer, an audio person, and then there's a lot of um, singers and um, guitarists. Uh, there's only eight people, and I chose to do those eight based on their performance, but I also thought this was a great opportunity to try um, to flex some some older abstract muscles and I decided to do um, something called crystal portraits. So there were some abstracts that were very intentionally, there was some um, foreground background action, but it was mostly textural and uh, I just made it a really nice bridge into an expansion of my portraits. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Let me um, jog around to Gay. Gay, you were talking about, um, I, I know for years, your work is, um, your work has been activist work and it has um, a message. Is, is your work, do you think, um, from, you know, let's say 2015, has it changed in any way? Just tell us a little bit. Um, no, I think probably, what's the terminology, woke? I've been woke for a while. And I think when I, I just got to a certain point where I just, I didn't paint just to be painting something pretty. You know, I have to, it's something inside of me. Um, if something stirs me up, I have to put it to canvas. It's just the way I operate. I can't, I, I just can't let things go. So yeah. it's 2015. 20, I mean, I, I think I'm a little more angry now. <laughs> if, if that, outward with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. always there under the surface. I know that's yeah. the case for me. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little yeah. more angry now. So. Yeah. Um, let me, let me ask Don this question. Um, Don, you are the, um, I'm so pleased because hey, Don is the very first, the, the first, the primo. Yeah. Um, yeah. The <laughs> Uh, uh, award recipient here so um, can you so tell proud. Us, so proud I know super proud mm -hmm. super proud um, tell us just a little bit about it and um, yeah just tell us about that experience would you um, well that, that that it was a little overwhelming um, I kind of followed in, in, in the footsteps of, of Amita Robinson um, from CCAD uh, we have a lot of similarities as far as uh, our, our technique. Uh, she, she works with fabric. I work with fabric. Uh, a lot of our work is community-based uh, as well. And even when I, when I got the news, I was actually doing a show in New York, and um, I, I got that call, and I had to really act composed. I was really excited, but I had to act composed. I was in a room full of people, but that, that was, it, it was a little overwhelming, and, but I also felt that it was, it was a long time coming as well. You know, I, I put a lot of work into what I do, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that, for that opportunity. That's great. Awesome, awesome. All right, let me talk to Fran. And so I also want to just say, um, I'm going to put Fran on the spot here because I've known Fran since she was a little girl and I I'm honestly couldn't be prouder of her. Um, so this is, is really cool to just see her grow up and um, just walk in her purpose, you know? So it's really cool. I'm so proud of you, Fran. <laughs> you the bomb, girl. <laughs> so, um, Fran did. She had this wonderful idea. Um, I don't know. You you have to tell me a little bit more about it. But um, it was a series where you wanted to, um, or you had you didn't want to. You did. You painted um, images of black men, and you wanted to put them everywhere, um, extending out to the suburbs. And just tell us a little bit about that project. 
Yeah. Um, so like you said, I just had honestly like so that post that you saw on Facebook, it was kind of like from a place of emotion. Like after hearing about George Floyd and everything, I was like, let's just paint black men's faces all over the city. And like a the response of everybody was like yes let's do it like you know that obviously gives you a little bit of a push but the more you sit and think about it you're like yeah let's do it like i said earlier like um we as a people are just beautiful dignified humans and so like that was the i feel like that was the narrative especially of african-american men that i really want to push because a lot of times <laughs> as angry and you know just every all the negative things um and so like it started at the box park um where we had those uh two by two boards and it was like a project that I initiated different artists from around the city came and they painted a board some people more than one um some some of the faces were of men who actually live like in that community um and we just painted their faces and created like a little public display in the park there. Um, and then obviously doing murals throughout the city with that same thing in mind. Um, and it will continue on into the new year. Actually, there's like a lot of projects <laughs> being lined up, uh, especially like having been reached out to from suburbs like Westerville and Bexley um, and some other places that they're like, we want to create a space and we want to work with you to make this happen because we feel like it's necessary. Um, so that's just really like wild to, to, you know, like have that actually be happening. Um, and again, I just, I just feel like it's necessary. So. I know that's really cool. Um, also just want to um, point out, we are missing to, um, also two amazing artists um, here in this call. So Molly Mustakim, I want to say that uh, she is actually doing a workshop with All People Arts, uh, I believe October 22nd, but go to uh, allpeoplearts.org uh, website to register um, for the workshop. She is doing a workshop on jewelry making. She is one of the most resourceful artists I've ever seen. Um, so I definitely um, invite you to come and check that out. Also, I want to mention Brian uh, Moss is not here. Moss, he's not here. But um, I want to also say this. We have not only one Amina Robinson, um, right. Amina Robinson Award recipient here. We have two. Um, Brian is uh, in residence, uh, the first artist in residence at the Amina Robinson House. Um, so super, this is a dope show. I got a dope, <laughs> dope roster of artists. So yeah, this is great. Um, so I want to say that. So let me um, just end this call on this question. Um, what are you most hopeful for? I'm going to be cheesy and say unity. Okay. That's good. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I am most hopeful for change that lasts and change that goes uh, beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. you know? Not just surface, yeah. Real authentic work being done and like being sustained. Yes. Um, I, I would have to say action. Would, would like to see some follow up to with, with everything that's happening. So. Mm. Systemic change policies not you know when we have tragedies everyone's always you know oh our hopes and thoughts well we need to go beyond hopes thoughts prayer we need action so i'm with all of those answers i think all of those are good well guys again i just want to say thank you so much for taking time um out of your busy schedules i know you guys are just crazy busy um so again thank you, you. And um, thank you for being a part of this show. This show meant so much to me, um, you know, as a person who's been a part of All People Arts um, since the beginning. Um, and just to have you guys be a part of this, like, first exhibition that's, like, finally here. It's been so huge. So it's been a real honor. Uh, yeah, I'm honored, too. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm here. Thank yeah. you. And love all your work, everybody. And great to see you. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate